Yo, how's everybody doing? It's the Hawking Regime here, and today I'm coming at you guys with another 2017-2018 NBA roster breakdown, NBA 2K roster breakdown, that is, and today doing the Boston Celtics, and to be completely honest with everybody out there who's most likely going to be somehow affiliated with the Boston Celtics, or maybe just interested in watching this video, I'm personally not a huge fan of Boston sports at all, don't like the Patriots, the Red Sox, don't really care for the Bruins, so when it comes to Celtics, you would expect me not to really like them, but interestingly enough, I don't really have any problems with the Celtics uh, whatsoever, I actually enjoy watching them play, and I always wanted them to have success. And it's a combination of a couple of things, but one of the main things early on is I really actually enjoyed watching the original Big Three in Boston. That was uh, pretty recent, obviously, with um, you know the Ray Allen, Garnett, uh, Rondo, you know Pierce. I guess it was four guys, but you know the Big Three and Ray Allen, Garnett, and Pierce it was really fun to watch. So I always enjoyed them, um, but. Getting just right on into the roster breakdown for the Boston Celtics, I like to do this via position. So we go with Isaiah Thomas starting things out. And I don't need to really cover too much about Isaiah. We know how great of a finisher, how great of a season he really had last season. Um, you know, just almost MVP, basically MVP type numbers. Just the fact that James Harden and Russell Westbrook had even better years and, and they just had, you know, incredible seasons. So it's hard for to put Isaiah at fault, to be honest. But he had such an unbelievable season. As we go into these roster breakdowns and this one in particular uh, some of the players on this one unfortunately were not we're kind of left out so some of the guys that really shouldn't be on here we'll get into a little bit later but the guys that should be on here include uh, Zizic, Abdul Nader, uh, Semi Ojale, Aaron Baines, or Aaron Baines actually will be on here, Yabusele, Daniel Thais, and Shane Larkin actually I think Thais actually is on this list but Shane Larkin is not so uh, those guys all not on this in particular, this list in particular, and I'm sorry about that. I really apologize. They just weren't inserted into uh, the roster. As we look at Terry Rozier right here, Rozier actually is going to be, you know, consistently regarded as a solid backup point guard for Boston because of the fact that he just has greater athleticism, a little bit better uh, frame, and obviously not the scoring ability that Isaiah has, but offers pretty solid energy off the bench. I always thought he shot a higher percentage from three point land than, than like the 31 percent they just showcased right there, but. You know, solid backup, to be honest with you. Obviously, they can go. Um, they could have gone in a different direction, but I think they, they enjoyed what Rozier brought to the table. And they have really a lot of Sony forwards now. They could play uh, some of these forwards at, like, guard at times. You know, have Gordon Hayward bring the basketball up the court as we pass up. Demetrius Jackson, another guy who's not on the team anymore. Um, but we get Marcus Smart right here. He's one of the two guards they had last year, the two two guards, the main ones, and Avery Bradley and himself that – were talked about in the trade and Bradley ended up being the one being shipped away which is unfortunate because he was one of the best perimeter defenders or, or one of the best all on ball defenders in the league and Smart is a great defender as well but just doesn't have the consistency from off from an offensive standpoint that I think that Boston really desired and that's a little bit unfortunate um really quickly though talking about some of the players that are not going to be on this list in particular is uh we'll talk about Zizic actually a little bit later but Semi Ojale is a guy I'm really excited about from SMU I don't think he's going to get a ton of playing time this year but if I was a Boston fan I would keep my eye out on him just because I think that he was really talented in college and a great shooter uh, a great stroke from three-point land so uh, he's a guy that I definitely keep my eyes on maybe Shane Larkin will even be a guy that they might give some minutes off the bench instead of Terry Rozier uh, you just never know with Brad Stevens and how these things will will roll out with this kind of new school team they lost a lot of the players they had on their team last season so it's a new look Celtic squad to be honest with you as we look at speaking of new look we look at Gordon Hayward the newest piece and the brightest piece for this franchise coming from Utah and playing under Brad Stevens in college now going to be playing under him in the NBA professionally just kind of unbelievable how his progression has been throughout his you know career basically a guy like Kawhi Leonard who kind of started off slow and just worked his way up um, although obviously he was a really high draft pick but and Kawhi was you know a faster grower than Gordon Hayward but you know still Hayward has been able to average 22 points a game this past season uh, was an all-star in the Western Conference as a forward which is no easy task um, as a three-point you know, shooter almost 40 percent from the field last year just from two-point shooting 50% free throw line, about 85%, 47% from the field as a whole. So, you know, just had a very good season, and, and it showcased, you know, was on it was, it was just on full display last year. So really nice pickup for Boston, and he's going to add another 
number one scoring op er, option for Boston, along with Isaiah Thomas. That's extremely important when you get to uh, the ends of game. So we'll see how he performs come playoff time, assuming Boston does make the playoffs, which many people believe they will. As we look at Jason Tatum, their number one draft pick this past season, and rookies are kind of sometimes in the Boston system, not played a bunch. So we'll see how Tatum works out with Boston this season. I would expect him to get some time just because he's that talented, that good of a player already, especially offensively. Um, so we'll see how that works out. But, man, they have so many talented forwards, it feels like. Uh, it's just incredible. Like, I can't even believe it. And Gerald Green, by the way, is another guy we passed up, no longer with the Boston Celtics. So... Jay Crowder, another forward. I mean, it just seems like it's endless. There's like five guys uh, that you could put out there and be relatively comfortable um, with any of those five guys at the small forward position. And, and that's what's going to be really crazy to watch this year. I don't know how the rotation is going to go. Because Crowder was a starter last year. Now, you know, he's likely coming off the bench, you would think. But they list him as a small forward slash power forward. So wouldn't be too surprised if at some point he's inserted in the lineup and, you know, they have both him and Gordon Hayward or and, you know, Tate. Him or, or Jalen Brown on the court at the same time. You just you don't know how these things are going to work out for Boston. They just got a lot of options, and that's a good thing, to be honest with you, because it allows for a lot of versatility against uh, teams that you might need to change up your matchups with. And, and Jay Crowder offered great defensive ability and also good three-point shooting ability. Was there something that they lacked with uh, Marcus Smart? And Marcus Morris actually doesn't have a crazy amount of three-point shooting as well. So it was an interesting pickup here. Another guy who can play small forward. Um, but the interesting about Morris is that he's really not great at any one individual area, I would say. As a three-point shooter, you know, he can get the job done. Nothing too crazy. Nothing to brag about right there. Two-point shooting, mid-range, pretty solid. Rebounding, nothing crazy. 14 points a game, you know, solid. So nothing insane about Marcus Morris as a pickup, but, you know, they, they obviously wanted him on the team. So I'm going to be interested to see how they use him, to be honest with you. I just don't know. It's it's tough to tell I, with all these guys. Uh, they got Jalen Brown, another guy, uh, second-year player out of California. Played well with, with Boston, 17 points a game or 17 minutes per game, so I played some decent minutes. I thought the rookie would play a little even less than that, so uh, maybe I was mistaken about that. But Jalen Brown, defensively, very solid. I mean, even played against LeBron James, and people talked about him not doing half bad of a job against uh, LeBron James. And offensively, obviously, still work in progress, so we'll see how that carries on for Boston. But a bunch of athleticism at that position. Um, and Daniel Thays, a guy from Germany, and actually, I, yeah, play, he can basically play center, which is crazy as well. So I don't know how he's going to be utilized with Boston. It's, it's tough to tell. Al Horford is a guy that definitely is going to be starting and is really important to this team because of the fact that not only is he like, he is the main big man. He is the already established all-star center slash power forward that they have. But he's so versatile in that he can play solid defense. He's not a shot blocker, but great, you know, very underrated passer, can score in a multitude of ways, has even expanded his range from the from you know just shooting two pointers and going and dominating down low in the post to the three point line, which is uh, really important to do nowadays. We you know, and he just helped Boston out on the perimeter and, and expanding their three point abilities and which has become really valuable in the league and is a good free throw shooter. So there's a lot of positives to Al Horford's game and a very solid player and just will add another dimension to this team as they add Gordon Hayward, you know, now it's just more and more difficult to guard in each and every single one of these players. And that's just going to be interesting. I don't know. Um, I, I, I am curious to watch, as many of us are, the Celtics-Cavaliers matchup, which we hope will eventually happen in the Eastern Conference playoffs. Because, you know, Horford, I feel like, could, you know, I guess he's getting a little bit older, but you would think that at some point, he, you know, Tristan Thompson couldn't guard. I feel like a guy like Tristan Thompson or Kevin Love can't really be able to guard a guy like Horford at times. Um, but maybe he's just not that 1v1 player that I thought he, he was at one point which would make a lot of sense, but it is going to be crazy to watch um, those matchups in the playoff because Boston is going to be tougher to guard all around with the addition of Gordon Hayward, uh, regardless of the fact that they lose Olenek, Jarebko, Gerald Green, um, you know, they didn't no longer, Demetrius Jackson didn't really play, Tyler Zeller didn't really play, um, and they have some other guys, I think a guy, uh, power forward, Mickey, they lost as well, so uh, they did lose a lot of players, but I really like the pieces they added, Baines is one of them, 
And again, it's interesting with the league being as small ball oriented as it is. I don't know how many playing time Baines will get along with Zizic. Zizic is a guy that actually people think that is actually a better player in a lot of ways than Baines. And he can shoot the basketball uh, younger, is a little bit taller, I believe. And, you know, is probably more, is definitely more fluid and athletic if you watch him play in the summer league this this past offseason. So uh, definitely excited to watch Boston play. I can't wait for the East to get a little bit of competition to the Cavaliers. And I think that the Boston Celtics have